Hey, Jeff, hey. what's up? Hey, hey. Ready to do this? Ready to do it? Did you finish, am. Brian? Did you finish all of it? I did. Um, I'm probably not going to talk, talk as much as you guys are in this one. <laughs> I'm just going to. My guess. gosh. <laughs> Come on, man. I do have a few thoughts. I'm not going to say they're positive thoughts, but they're thoughts. Oh we'll wait till gosh. we start. We're fighting Dude, already. Come on, this is like great. This is actually like good writing. Like this is actually like better than Kenobi. Better than. Okay. I'm okay. not going to get triggered. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be mad or disappointed, but you know, Brian, we're both at the same time. So. We're very disappointed in you. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to sit in the corner and think about what you said. And that could be our soft opening. Look at that. <laughs> just us just being mad at you. Not even mad. We're just disappointed. I haven't even said anything negative yet. <laughs> oh, we can feel it. You implied heavily. <laughs> and and quite frankly, how dare you? So Hey, everyone, welcome back to TV Guys, where if you had a dollar for every time Andor said that he couldn't stay somewhere, you'd be a millionaire. I'm Matt. I'm Brian. And I'm Jeff. And we're coming out swinging. So we're talking about Andor this week. I know. So for you guys, it hasn't been super long. Like you just had an episode post last week and it was great. And you had your Thanksgiving and everything was wonderful. Brian and I, like we loaded up on some episodes before Thanksgiving because my life for the last two weeks has been insane. So now I can breathe. And it's yeah. really nice, you know? It's, it's been a hot minute since we recorded. It has. So I, when I say welcome back, I really am like, oh, welcome back. Is, do I even remember how to do this? I don't know. <laughs> and Jeff, you just went on a trip. You were gone for a little bit. So you're getting I acclimated was. to life. Yes. And, and then, Brian, difficult. I'm sure you had a, a very busy Thanksgiving, too. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. <laughs> I don't know. It was normal, you know? Brian's clearly I, I, ready for Christmas. I did get yeah. the Christmas tree. Yeah, I had I had the tree up before Thanksgiving. I'm one of those people. Ooh. Yeah, we are as well. Um, part of it is we get to like, if for anyone who's really against that, we can just be like, hey, just so you know, uh, my parents come for Thanksmas, so we celebrate Thanksgiving and Christmas at the same time in that weekend. Thanks, so we Chris. have the extra justification, but no, we've had it up before Thanksgiving before that anyway. Well, here's the thing, Matt, as an adult, you don't have to justify to anybody. They can just disapprove of your life and you can go on living it. <laughs> that That's <laughs> true. So you know what? All you disapprovers out there, uh-uh, I do what I want. I'm that's right. 34. Deal with yeah. that. He does what he wants because I told him he could. <laughs> <laughs> I do whatever I want, provided that Andrew thinks it's okay. So <laughs> there you go. Well, we are talking actually about Andor. Um, before, so I'll say this real quick, and then I want to start off with Brian's point of view. Okay. Because Brian, I don't want to influence you, Brian, but I think Jeff and I are going to convince you of the greatness of Andor. And to me, I loved my favorite Star Wars movie, it's Force Awakens. I really love what they did. And so I, for me to say that Andor is the best Star Wars property since Force Awakens kind of means something. Wow. So that's, that's bold. Yeah, that's bold. That's where I'm starting from. But Brian he is a little bit more of a tough sell. So Brian, how did you feel about Andor? Okay, well, first to set the stage, uh, I only saw Rogue One for the first time like a, like a few weeks ago. Because I knew that this was leading into that. Mm-hmm. And also, I was like, my life has also been busy. I didn't have time to sit and watch Andor. I was I was watching Andor while I was doing stuff. And and I know that I'm uh, okay. I'm not a casual Star Wars fan, but I'm not a super fan. I'm like a few steps above casual something there. So it's like I don't have the nostalgia for Rogue One. Rogue One was 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 good, but it was like the whole movie was to me was just to explain why they built the Death Star or why they had the plans for the Death Star. And so this is like a prequel to a prequel full of characters that I don't really care about because I don't, you know, it, it, as someone, I don't really care about Andor. I, I'm, you know, like, even though it wasn't as good of a show, like I like Boba Fett and Obi-Wan because like they're full of the characters that I know. So it's sure. characters I don't know mm-hmm. and a show that I'm watching while I'm doing stuff. I don't know what's going on half the time. I don't know what any, anyone's names are except for for Andor. I know there's Andor, and I know there's Andy Serkis' character, 
And then anyone else, that's I don't his know, actual Eloy. name in the script. That's yes. his name. Andy Serkis' character. And I don't know how to describe anyone else by like the 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 Empire blonde chick and the guy who got fired was obsessed with catching Andor. Like, that's kind of how I describe these people. And so I wasn't really invested, <clears throat> really at all. And even at the very end, it's like the big reveal was supposed to be that they were building the Death Star. Like I kind of figured it's not that like out a along. big reveal. I, I mean, kind of like... figured that out along. Even I didn't know what was going on. And even I figured out they were probably building the Death Star. Knowing where this where this went in the chronology, mm-hmm. I didn't so, piece together that they would use the stuff from the prison to build the Death Star. I think that's a really oh, smart, good, good, good job. You did it uh, for me. I was like, oh yeah, that makes complete sense. I yeah, just didn't I didn't really give ahead. it much thought to be yeah. completely honest. Uh, that's, but there were some really good scenes. That scene where they had like the raid on the Empire early on was a really good scene. And that scene yeah. that when they were flying and the guy had like the, the the lightsaber ship where he like had the blades come out, my mind was like, how many episodes of filler did you get to? I mean, maybe you guys don't think it's filler to get to like the cool stuff. Definitely like that. not filler. Not I me, I I disagree. Yeah, it felt yeah. like Andor was broken into like four different like parts. You know, yeah. you, you had that first little setup, and then you had the planning of the heist of the payroll, and then you had after that what was after that? Because at some point he went to prison, and that's another section. And mm-hmm. then there's the rebellion at the very end. Yeah, the, I mean the prison people. was kind of the next phase, sort of. I mean there was like two episodes, and then he ended up in prison, I think, or like yeah. it was like, yeah. I couldn't remember what was that that in between, but yeah, it was, I liked, I was in for every single part of it. Maybe the very first episode or two started off a little slow, but even then I was like, the writing was really good that it still had me captivated. And I, you, you talked about these characters and for me, I actually really enjoyed most of these characters and not, not like so much that the characters themselves were just amazing standouts. Like for instance, the, the weird obsessive neurotic lieutenant guy that started yeah. like that one attack preemptively on his own accord and gets fired. Mm-hmm. Like that's not so much a good character for on its own, but in the scope of everything that was happening to have an obsessive guy going after him was a really, it was a good foil for a lot of the other action yeah. that was happening. Yeah. So I, a actually, lot of those. I liked him. Because I, I knew where he was coming from. I understand what, what he wanted. I didn't like him as a character, but I liked, I didn't agree with him, but I liked him as a character because I understood him. Mm-hmm. Who, who'd you like? Is uh, There's a lot of good characters. So let's go. What's what's some of your favorites? Jeff, who's who's your top character of the show Luthen. so far? Me too. I, I, I thought, Lu- honestly, I think, Luthen, well, I, I re- actually really do like Cassian as well, but um, I just thought that, I don't know. For me, it's sort of like a trifecta. It's like Cassian, Luthen, and then I will admit, I was not one of those people that was like, I love Mon Mothma. And then I saw this and um, Genevieve O'Reilly's acting chops really got to shine. And I was like, wow, like Mon Mothma is a huge character. And and I I think that they, I never gave her the credit she deserved, maybe. Um, I, I, I didn't hate her character. I just was just like, you know, whatever um and so yeah i but i would say luthan to me is like one of the most complex characters i mean like there are other characters that are up there i would say darth vader is definitely like tier one but i just thought that they added such a unique character someone who who recognizes his fate and his doom he knows he's doomed but he's he's so committed to this cause and so like that monologue he gives in like i think it's like episode 10 or some eight nine somewhere in there i i went back and i watched that monologue a couple of times i was like that's like i mean acting wise that's amazing i mean dude i just think he was great like i yeah really like his character and I felt like Luthen was a really good embodiment of the theme of overall of Andor of like what it costs to be yeah. on this side of the rebellion. And like, like Andor is kind of caught in the middle and he's almost like an extreme for Andor to pull him of like, you know, it's going to take everything. And sometimes the methods that we use are going to look like the empires. And like, that's, that was kind of a critique on Saw Gerrera in Rogue One is that sure. that was his his fulfillment or like why he was that that's why they made him even like act like Darth Vader of having the breathing that he needed. Uh-huh. And well, what so- was interesting was how Luthen even even for Luthen saw was you could tell that Saw Guerrero was kind of a loose cannon even back then. 
Yeah. Um, which is like four, five, at this point, it's like five, five, four years before, or no, it's five years. Yeah. Yeah. And we can get into that, but I'm kind yeah. of what their structure is going to be of the whole series, but. You bet. Yeah. So Luthan is a great character and he's probably my top character, but since you already took him, I do also want to give some credit to, I don't know why I loved it. I loved kind of like the, I was the one with the, the prequels that I actually thought the world building of it was pretty good, including yeah. the political side mm -hmm. and like to show just slowly seeding control and like what that can do in long term and how that affected and tied into the, the original trilogy. And so I liked some of this bureaucratic stuff, like the what's his name? The empire like head guy that was getting reports from everyone. Um, in, oh like, yeah. The from the, movie. from the ISB, the Imperial security bureau, which is yeah. sort of like the CIA slash FBI of uh, the empire. And he's just like, you know, he's so sure of himself, but he's also very pragmatic and very smart. And so it's mm -hmm. like, you know, he was wrong at one point and the one empire lady was smarter and, and like, you know, he admits it like, okay, then you get in charge of the sector because we should have been looking more into this and that yeah. sort of stuff. And yeah. I just really loved those scenes. They held my attention, even though on paper, they're probably, you, they're not an action scene. I'm sorry, Brian. They're, they could be boring scenes for someone like you. Well, actually, well, there, there are bits and pieces that I liked. Maybe, like, I liked the mentality when, when Andor went to prison and they were saying like, well, we're cheaper than droids. And it's like, I think this is like a, uh, the whole thing that like, probably came down from the emperor. Correct me if I'm wrong. Where like they're basically just throwing people in jail for every little thing they can, so that they have more slave labor to build the Death Star. Yeah, I just think that like for me, even though like you know Brian, you kind of did not. I don't know if cri criticized is the right word, but talking about oh the big payoff was just that they're working the Death Star. I think star wars has a way of especially if it's related to like the the core saga these mm -hmm. these especially the first six films is this kind of circular everything is kind of revolving around this this thing and if you want to adopt that into the force the the will of the force is drawing people together um towards this circular thing so it's almost mm -hmm. this like vortex that is the focus is that original those original three films and and that that's kind of the tipping point yeah um that the apex if you will um and so all these events are kind of circulating around there um towards that slowly but surely uh, and so for me i i i kind of looked at a lot of this and i think it kind of creates a they did it in such a way, I don't know if this was intentional, where you can kind of look at it and go, is it the will of the force that all these people are kind of kind of gravitating towards each other? And each person, if you can kind of trace back, like Cassian helped this person, helped this person, helped Luke Skywalker, helped, you know, just slow like these dominoes, this domino effect. Um, and it also, I mean, even with um even with Cassian, it seemed like no matter what he did, it's almost like he was destined to to do what he's doing like almost like the force had a purpose for him to in order to open the door for luke skywalker to do what he was going to do um so it was just kind of a fun thing that i was thinking about like as the show was going on because it seemed like no matter what cassian did it's it almost seemed like his efforts to try and avoid being involved in anything you know, he's a very self-centered person it almost seemed like all of his efforts kind of just no matter what he did pushed him into this role of because you started to see that leader come out in him at the by the end of this season. So I thought that was cool. Well, it wasn't in Rogue One, wasn't Cass, it wasn't Andor like a, a, a spy within the Empire? Yeah, he's the head of uh, head of Rebel. And so how does that work? Because in Andor, he was like being hunted by the Empire. So how does he go from like there to being in the Empire? Did, did I miss something? He's not in the Empire. He's in the Rebellion. I know, but wasn't he like in the Empire, like undercover? Or, no, no. I, or, no. Okay. No. I'm remembering he, that wrong. He does wear like an Empire suit at a certain point for um, one of the, like the, I think the mission on Scarif, he's in the Empire yeah, costume, he, right? To infiltrate. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that might be where that that mix is. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like your hypothesis here because that does fix there. There's one part of this show that I was like, I have an issue with this. It's not big enough for me to say, oh, this is bad. But it felt like, oh, suddenly this happened. And that was him going to prison. I just 
felt it was like, okay, we need Andor in prison, but he can't go for some of the stuff he's already done because we we need to have we just need to figure out a different way. So it's like, oh, you're just mm-hmm. gonna get thrown in in a random stop. And I get like that they then tried it to tie it in of like, well, it's just unfair, and you're supposed to feel that it's unfair, but it's like it just comes out of nowhere to get to the prison scene. And for me, it didn't feel purposeful. It just felt like something that happened. Yeah, but again, you want to talk about the the will of the force. Uh, look at who he met in there. Okay. I think I might need to translate a little bit. <laughs> I, because I'm aware of background characters that no one else or not no one else, but a lot of people aren't, especially my wife. There are moments in, in these shows where I exclaim at a <laughs> reference or something. And she has no idea. And we have to pause and I have to explain it because I startle her. Cause I go, no way. Um, so when he gets into the prison, he mentions a character named Melshi. And I immediately yell, Melshi! Melshi is from Rogue One. He's in the Battle of Scarif at the end. He's the one that's commanding all the main forces and Cassian keeps radioing back to him and even refers to him as Melshi. So I saw him before he even said his name and I was like, that's Melshi. Same actor, everything. Um, So again, it's like, and even what he learned from Andy Serkis' character, uh, a.k.a. Kino Loy. um, A.k.a. Snoke. AKA Snoke, uh, who, um, he, he's learning a lot about like, even when they take over the prison, he's still resisting leadership, even though he was the one that spurred everybody on and or is the one that spurred everybody on to actually yeah. care enough to do something. So you see those leadership qualities coming out. And even when they take over the bridge or that control room and it's him and Andy circus and, uh, Cassian and he's like there the calm's yours and he gives it to to Andy Serkis's character even though he's the one that led this whole thing so even then he's still there's this hesitancy to lead um when it really like the you know when it comes to making big speeches when really it was him that did this it was him that spurred everybody on and so it's like him learning there's a lot he learned in that time Mm-hmm. caring about people too you know or i think maybe just revealing the true intent of his heart that he does care but he's just trying not to care about people you know i don't know i did yeah. like the prison scenes a little bit and actually yeah. i have a connection with the prisons okay uh if you think i've seen the movie the island mm-hmm. yes okay it kind of reminded me of that where it's like no one actually leaves the you know it's like they're all in yeah. prison and the island star of that movie Ewan McGregor Obi Wan Kenobi, also okay. known as Ewan McGregor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they're all in white, it's, just like in the yeah, just like in when the they're movie. starting to talk about that, like but, like no one, no one actually leaves out of here. I'm like, it's mm-hmm. like the island. Then I had the second thought. Oh wait a minute, that's that's Obi Wan Kenobi's movie. Yeah. Yep. And at the end, he defeats Boromir as they're hanging from the thing. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I, I, I'll clarify too that like when I was saying that, yeah, I, I did have an issue with like, oh, that then suddenly they're in there, like applying that force guiding thing makes more sense and gives a little bit more of an acceptable headcanon because like then you start looking at other parts of it like for instance, and I forget the young guy that was part of their group when they're going to payroll, but the guy that wrote the. Uh, um that book i can't yeah remember what it's called. Well, i can't remember his name and what is what's what's the like a carl marx type but like you know the manifesto <laughs> manifesto yeah, there yeah, you yeah. go um so the that kid like he gets he gets squished in like a freak random accident as yeah. they're escaping and Mimic. like that's there you go and yeah, so Yemek's death yeah. was another thing that was like that definitely was a catapult that he died for a cause and and in having his manifesto like that inspires Andor and um or the Andor's mom getting sick and dying and yeah. her by the way her speech was really cool like I, I mm-hmm. think that Andor the show has really benefited from seeing what worked with the Hunger Games series because the hunger games does a lot of these same topics the, yeah, the yeah it does. and so pulling from that i'm sure that they did i'm sure there was some influence there because there's things that felt very familiar maybe and, i did maybe yeah. i did like the show because i'm actually liking these scenes that you're talking about <laughs> well i just think that like too it's hard look it's hard if you're like distracted i would say it's not a good show if you have a hard time with the slow burn of the show 
it's better to just wait till all the episodes come out. That's what I told a friend of mine because yeah. she watched a, like the first episode. She's like, nah. And I'm like, I was like 10 episodes in at that point. <laughs> and I was like, just, just wait, like, like just, just wait. And then wait till they all come out and watch all of them all at once. Cause she's somebody that really appreciates, you know, kind of what the show, if you can look at the whole season as a whole, she's really into that. Um, and so I was like, just, just wait. Or if you're busy and you have it on and you're like doing other things while you, it's not a good show for that. Yeah. I, um, I would that, say that, that probably shot me in the foot. Cause at one point I'm like ironing shirts and like, and like cleaning my house while I'm watching right. on my phone. Yeah. It's, that's really tough. Cause there's a lot of like, I mean, even just, there's a lot of communication in the cinematography too. It's not just like dialogues. So if you're listening, you're going to miss stuff. And so, um, yeah, so I would say that maybe didn't, didn't help you. Cause I'm like looking at it. I'm like, I, okay, I'll say this with me. I'll get these out of the way. Cause I, I loved the show. Um, but I, I would say there's a couple of things in the show that are very un Star Warsy, And I actually don't, I mentioned this on someone's post on Instagram and it was like 50 50. I had like people like insulting me, you know how people are on, online. I was like, dude, what? Well, come on. I'm just giving you my opinion <laughs> off of fact. Yeah. Uh, number one, the implied, uh, it was like in season or episode two with that uh, Latina actress, her name's Bix in the show that implied sexual intercourse between her and her boyfriend was very un Star Wars y. Um, so much so that like Irvin Kirshner, who is the director of uh Empire Strikes Back, has famously said he's like, uh, a kiss in Star Wars is like the equivalent of making love. Like, so he even got it. Even back then, he was like, Star Wars is different. Um, and then the other thing was the use of real world cuss words um which are acronyms a lot of them are acronyms in our world they mean something but in star wars uh they actually make up their own cuss words so you have like carabast from rebels and dank ferrick which is said a lot in the mandalorian um and so i those were like those two things were like minor gripes because they were so quick yeah. Um, do they I, make up their own swear words so that they can stick a show on TV without having to worry about it? I mean, yeah. So obviously there's like legit, like, I mean, it's like a kid, it was a kid, yeah. a kid show. Um, I, I'm also just against like, there were a, cu- a couple of things like that, that I felt like were too, maybe too adult. I don't know. I mean, it's like, it didn't really bother me enough because I love the show. I think it's great. Yeah. Uh, I felt like this was a more, a little more PG 13 than PG. And oh, it's st- definitely PG 13. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Still more tame than a lot of these shows like, oh, sure. made nowadays, yeah. but yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely on the edgier side for star Wars. I felt like rogue one was also a little bit of that too, because it's, it's dealing with these gray area themes that aren't so black and white and star sure, Wars sure. for a long time was so black and white and still has a piece of that good versus evil. And then now like with the sequels and with rogue one and this show, they're getting a little bit more into that gray area, which I don't like as much, but I did feel like it helped tell this story. So I'd right. forgive it for that. A yeah, little bit. yeah. I think, I mean, some of that's just going to be 2020, 21st century for you, you know, yeah. there's, um, but I, I do think, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's kind of an interesting conversation to have. Cause obviously I really, really like the show. Um, I think it's great writing. I think it's great acting. Um, I actually thought that all of the action scenes you were actually like, you earned them. Oh yeah. Um, which maybe was a little bit too slow for some people's taste. And I can totally understand that, but um, I feel like next season is going to be a little bit more like fast because this took place over one year. Whereas the next season is going to take place a year after, and then it's going to cover three years leading okay. right up to rogue one. So you get three years packed into one season versus one year packed into one season. So is the next season going to close the gaps more? Like, are we going to get more like, like Tarkin and them in the next season? You think? Uh, I don't know about Tarkin. I mean, they've been pretty tight-lipped, but they did say that it's going to have a lot more Star Wars elements. Okay. Uh, 
because they said that you know the whole goal is that they're they're going to lead right into Rogue One okay. by the end of this. Um, and I heard Tony nice. Gilroy himself say that at Star Wars Celebration, at the <laughs> panel I was at. So I can confirm he said that. Did you then yell out, bring back Ben Mendelsohn? Because that's what I want. No, I would be surprised if they don't bring him back. Yeah. He's or he's, he's an actor who I just love to see him and stuff. And he yeah. has taken a break, I think. He's not been around for a couple years. Oh, wow. Well. Not that I that I can think of. Well, I know that they just started shooting Andor season two, so who knows? He might be there right now as we speak. I love what you said about the the action sequences being earned because I think one of the one of the shining ways that you can look at that is you look at that first one when they are coming to arrest Andor, one of the first big action sequences, yeah. and um, there's the the clanging uh, that's happening on uh, Ferrix of yeah. uh, everyone, and and then the his mom is talking about that clanging and kind of giving that foreboding, and what a thrilling use of not music but actually really like rhythm but not not music uh-huh. and yeah. it was it propelled that action and, and it built up that tension and then like then the action scene started and you're like i'm already in because i was on the edge of my seat as you were building up to this so mm-hmm. they did a lot of that in my opinion i felt like they did such a good job of building the suspense before rewarding you mm-hmm. with the action i agree i agree yeah and I, as i said i i can appreciate the show for like, if you're a, if you're paying attention more, and if you're a giant Star Wars nerd like you guys, and I don't mean that as an insult because I'm oh, no, I'm, I'm a nerd in other ways. You say, scruffy looking nerf herder. Hey, I get that. That is Princess Leia. See, I get I get some stuff. Yeah, he's so, got it. Yeah, I got it. But um, yeah, so I I'd be willing to give this one another shot. I think I think I need to watch Rogue One again and actually pay more attention to that one as well. But. I was thinking today, do either of you guys remember, this was probably a long time ago, Patton Oswald had a comedy sketch all, talking about how much he hated the prequels. Have you guys heard that bit of his? I, I don't think so. So basically he's talking about how like the prequels, oh, in episode one, it's, it's Darth Vader, but all you see is him as a little kid. And like the third one, he's, oh, the Death Star, but oh, it's cool, I love the Death Star. Oh, it's just, the, you see the plans and it's being built. And he starts yelling like, I don't care how the things I love get built. I don't need to see how the Death Star gets built, how they put in the air conditioning and this and that. And I'm thinking after that whole rant, they made a whole movie and a whole TV show about how the Death Star gets built. Yeah, yeah. I, I think with this, with the Death Star, I mean, and I, I, that's, I mean, I, I do agree. I think that there's, uh, to some degree, I think there is like a little bit of like, with a lot of modern things. Sometimes I think w- what Star Wars represented was more ide- ideological bad, ideological good, right? Um, and you know, there are a lot of shades within the light side because you've got Han Solo, who you can tell isn't part of the Empire. But he's not like good, good yet, right? Even his costuming, black and white, right? And yeah. and so I actually love because I love that aspect of sometimes it's it, it's not a bad thing to just like have bad guys that because they they added texture to mm. that as the original trilogy went on, right? Like Darth Vader's Luke Skywalker's father. You know, and then you find that there's this inner turmoil within him. He thinks it's too late for himself, and he ultimately mm-hmm. gets redeemed. I think that, and then you realize that the emp- emperor has been the one that's been manipulating the whole. The emperor has been yeah. manipulating the things as a whole. So you do have some nuance in there, but it's o- overall, it's like stormtroopers bad, rebels good. Yeah, and I think that Tie Fighters bad, X wings and A wings and all those good. Yeah, and I. I do love that space, that aspect of the space opera. I feel like Mandalorian does a good job with that, yeah. maintaining that. Um, yeah. And so I, I do like, I, I do like. Uh, I think that's more my definitive, like John Favreau and Dave Filoni, who's working on Ahsoka. Yeah. To me, that's the that is the the quintessential Star Wars in the 21st century, living on George Lucas's yeah. legacy, living on. I think that they do that really really well and i I would say if i had to choose that'd be my preferred uh but um you know my more traditional view of star wars i've had to kind of like there were a couple of moments like i mentioned that i'm like uh that's not quite quite star wars because there were some moments especially in the the uh prison where i'm like 
this literally looks <laughs> this looks like just like a sci-fi show yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. it doesn't look like star wars yeah what's your point like how it was so it, the original trilogy was so like good guys versus bad guys really the only exception was han solo who was like he was a criminal but he was doing it for the money and then he came back in the end but then you know empire strike comes back comes on he's just like all right i'm one of the good guys now so he kind of lost that nuance after a new hope sure how do you guys feel about the the what I want to call the power creep of the modern era versus the old school? Because like when we had in the original trilogies and you see Yoda lift the X-Wing out mm. of the, like that is a cool moment. But then you get these video games and you see them like moving a, the Star Destroyer in the background with the force mm. or like. Admittedly, yeah. it's such a cool shot, but when uh, Kylo Ren at the beginning of Force Awakens mm. freezes the blaster bolt in midair and Poe, like that was super cool. But is that really like, should that be in the realm of powers or is that just getting bigger? Yeah, yeah but, I mean, I with that, I looked at that and I was like, well, this is in the future. And they made a point to say he wasn't a Sith, but he is a dark side user. And there's something else, you something darker at, at play. I, you know, I don't know how well they succeeded at that through that the whole of that trilogy. Yeah. But I didn't always interpret it as, oh, okay, well, this is like some new, you know, deeper understanding of the dark side. Or, I don't know. I, I mean, I played all the. Yeah, yeah, Star Wars Force games in the 90s, and they had crazy powers like that. So, sure. You also kind of have to suspend your disbelief a little bit because with the Star Wars saga is all out of order. It has been from the beginning because you have the original trilogy, then the prequels and the sequels, and the shows are all fill, fill, filled in. And it's like the graphics and like the technology looks so much better now. And you're like, this is leading into the original trilogy, which the graphics and all that was, you know, 45 years ago. Right. But it's supposedly taking place after all this. You kind of got to like suspend your disbelief a little bit on that. Yeah. But I will say, Matt, to your credit, the uh, from the Force Unleashed, Unleashed games where he's taking down the Star Destroyer, a little OP. Little OP. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I again, I really thought like the visuals of it are really cool. When when Darth Vader walks in and Kenobi and he like stops the uh, starship from leaving with just the force, like those are cool moments. I get it. I I don't know if it's just like uh, we just have to get bigger because we don't know what to do. Let's just get uh -huh. bigger. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. That next we'll find out there's a third Death Star that got taken down <laughs> oh by a Jedi, God. a no named Jedi, <laughs> ripped in half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all he did was he just looked at it and it just yeah, cracked it just, like an egg. Yeah, it just cracked like an egg. Or now C three PO will show up with two red arms. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. the same level of annoyance. Yeah. Um, okay, so what? Where do you guys feel like the future is for season two? What do you uh, like? Uh, definitely, they're going to be doing stuff with the Death Star, and there's definitely going to be tying in to a little bit more of the Empire that we knew and hated from the original series versus this IW, whatever the acronym was that they were using. Um, but what else do you think we're headed towards for season two? I have no idea. You, you take this one, Jeff. <laughs> okay. This is what I think. Um, I think that Luthen is going to, he's, I, I think he's obviously going to die. He knows he's going to die, but his death is going to be the big flashpoint for Cassian fully coming into who he is that we see him in rogue one, someone who's willing to do anything at all costs. I think Luthen is going to die about the halfway point of the series of the season. That's, that's my, that's my big prediction. And then um, I don't know. I think that the, the death star is going to become, it's just going to be this looming thing. I don't know that it's going to have like a heavy focus. If it does, I'll be stoked. But I think that it's going to be this slow reveal because they have to find out about the death star at some point. Uh, Cause yeah. there's, they talk about rogue one. There's rumors of a planet killer or something like something like that, but who knows? I mean, I think Matt, you might be, you might be right. It might be like more focus, more focused. Yeah. You know, who knows? Cause they, they, they do have to go slow with the death star because that, I mean, there can't be any satisfying payoff because that's rogue one, right? The payoff so, is rogue one. 
Um, I, I think for other characters, though, I think we're going to see Moth Manma lose her family. Uh, not like death, but I think that the, that's going to be the cost is that she ends up alone. Her daughter hates her because she doesn't understand what's going on. Her Do husband, you think she's going to go through with it? I don't know that she's going to go through with it. I don't I don't know if they're going to go through with that courtship or not, but I just think that no matter what happens, she's going to lose her family. Yeah, I think I think. It, yeah, something has to happen. Or, um, yeah, that's a really interesting one because that one's like you don't. It's still that story thread is still very much up in the air. Yeah, to go into season two. So I'm I'm really like still kind of piecing together what I think is going to happen with that. Yeah. All right, now Brian, now's your chance to tell us how, how the Muppets show up in season two. What's going to happen? You know, what? I I I, I could have used. Um... The Muppets as a um, a parallel for using a for, for no as as an analogy, but I refrained. And now you, that's your. This is on you. Well, I was also going to ask you if you were to recast this movie or this show with Muppet characters, who would you? <laughs> who would be who? I would have to rewatch it so I know who all the characters actually are. I will say okay. that. But what right. I was going to say, like my my criticism earlier about how it's like too far away from like the characters that you know. If it saying it'd be like making a a movie about Nigel the conductor because I'm sure Matt, do you even know who that is? No, probably yeah, not. totally. No, I don't definitely yeah. do. I'm not going to give you any more follow up questions than that. Let's just take it's it that no, I know. I have it. no idea who that is. He's a he's a nothing character, and that that's why I use him as an example. But okay, maybe Cassie and Andor is not a nothing character. He's a better analogy, but we're not going to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> So yeah. Cassian is number what in terms of reluctant hero, like in the Star Wars universe, because we've seen the reluctant hero how many times like Han is that classic example for sure. Of course. But yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, every single Star Wars version, every single movie has a version of the reluctant hero at some point. Yeah. Well, but, I think, too, especially given like. Given the nature of. Uh, like I don't know, in 2020, I did a lot of reading up on the Revolutionary War and just realizing like the extent of like what it what it cost people and how it it the uh choosing to side with uh you know the Continentals versus the Empire, the British Empire, yeah, um, what it divided households, it divided neighborhoods. And so I think one of the reasons why we keep seeing the whole reluctant hero story come up is because it's a very real and they, they'll tell it in different shades too. It's not always the same type of person, but you will have that that story continue to circulate because it's like someone's going to see themselves in one of these characters. I'm a little bit more like Han Solo. Now I'm a little bit more like this character, that character. And um, even uh, the the game Jedi Fallen Order with the character Cal Kestis is a reluctant hero, but for different reasons. Mm -hmm. His is from a place of pain. And so it's it's really interesting to find those different uh, facets of the reluctant hero in this whole galactic struggle and realizing the cost of what it would take, you know, to to mm -hmm. to stand up. I mean, it's like scary. <laughs> Like, and Fallen Order is getting a sequel just in case anyone loved that yeah, game. I just, just they just announced it. Yeah, the trailer okay. just came out like an hour ago. I I just saw like the first mention of it this week, and I don't know when they announced it, but that was the first mention I saw. So yeah. exciting times. Yeah. Um that was a great game. If you haven't played Jedi Fallen, it's it's Star Wars Dark Souls, and yeah. it works really well. It does, yeah. It's good, it's really good. Um, but yeah, going back to like the stuff about revolutionary war, like that is the purpose of Luthen's character is to highlight that everyone wants or not everyone, but there are so many people that when there are things that need reformation and or rebellion or revolution, whatever word you want to choose, that there are people who are content to sit on the sidelines and just like really, really hope that things work out without mm -hmm. having to sacrifice to make them happen. And Luthen's the one is like, well, sometimes we just need the oppression to <laughs> like stir people to get to a point of uncomfortability that they have to act and they have right. to move. Exactly. And so like, that's such a unique stance 
to take. And I think our country is definitely in a spot of like, no, it doesn't matter what side you're on that. There's all these people that are like, we need reformation in so-and-so area and we'll disagree what those areas are, but I feel like everyone's like, we could use a good like changing of things and changing of a guard in some, re- in some sure. response. Yeah. yeah. I like how you stay neutral. It's like listeners, whatever side of political you're on, that's what side we're on too. Yeah, <laughs> we're completely neutral. I, I mean, I definitely have things as like I want to see happen, but I know like I don't think you're going to go out there and be like, hey, do you feel like the world is in a good shape right now? And everyone's going to be like, yeah, this is good. I like yeah, what's it's happening. Awesome. It's legit. Yeah. Oh, but- one other thing with the um, season two that um, I know is going to happen is the introduction of the Yavin, the base on Rebel base on Yavin 4. Oh, nice. And seeing that. And I am so excited for that because I love like my favorite aspect of Star Wars is probably the ships and the space battles. Like that's yeah. that's like my favorite. It's oh, ever since a kid. It's always been my favorite. So like the Battle of Scarif at the end of Rogue One, the Battle of Endor at the end of uh, Return of the Jedi. Those are like my two favorite space battles in all Star Wars. So. Yeah. For me, it's and all then, with the characters. I'm a character guy. And yeah. I love I love uh, lightsabers. So the end of Rogue One with uh, Darth Vader's lightsaber. And yeah, it was that. pretty cool. That was like uh, one of those scenes that we didn't know that we needed. <laughs> like, <laughs> so oh. I was like, that was amazing. Yeah. That's why they're afraid. Okay. And terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And terrifying. But awesome. Yes. Yeah. Star yes. Wars, the horror movie. Mm-hmm. All right. Um. Anything that we didn't cover that we we need to hit or touch on? Brian, I know there's a lot that you've been waiting to say. I think, you know what? I will just say, I think we're good on my end. <laughs> Jeff, I feel like if you, you could talk for six more hours if you wanted to. I could. I'm actually really trying to hold back. <laughs> we, we brought you on so that you wouldn't hold back. Go, go ahead. Yeah, you... no, there's a, there's a, I mean, there's a lot. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm saying we could go for another another hour and a half two hours easy i don't want to do that i feel like you should make your own star wars podcast where you dive into it and then have us on as guests honestly yeah but here's the thing there's a great star wars podcast that already exists and i couldn't do it better than them so yeah i have some friends in duluth that have a star wars podcast um i i I just gave him a shout out and i have never even listened to a single episode oh see you didn't have to say that last part (laughs) I I don't, don't I don't have a filter. Like I do though. I don't have a filter. I'm like, oh, let me just let me just go ahead and hang myself out to dry. Yeah. Uh, uh, but no, I I know of a couple different Star Wars podcasts, but I don't know. I don't listen to too many out there. So if I've ever listened to your podcast, you know I like you. Wow. If that doesn't even listen to our podcast, and he's on it. Yeah, <laughs> I have. Before. You're not sold out to the cause enough, Matt. <laughs> I, I lived it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I was there. At the, yeah. Don't speak. I was there at the uh, the founding of the planet. No, that's not the line. Yeah. Well, I mean, ancient, to, yeah. don't speak ancient evil to me, which what is that? The Narnia line? Oh, yeah. Uh, don't speak. I was, the, there when it was, I was there. Yeah. Whatever the line is. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going for. And somehow well, the foundation of the planet. I don't, I don't listen to them right when they come up, because by the time they go up, like I've, I've listened to them when we we're recording them and when we we're editing them. But every now and then I'll go back and listen to an old episode that we recorded like months ago. And it's like, yeah, oh, yeah, I remember this. <laughs> oh, wow. That was a bad joke. All right. I've listened to our office ranking one like multiple times. It does it get funnier every single time you listen. No, it just makes me mad because I was going to put Dwight as number one. Paul was right. You didn't wait. You didn't put Dwight as number one. I don't even know what you're talking about. Okay. So when we did, oh, go ahead, Brian. So we you, had, you haven't talked enough. You get word count. We had an office ranking uh, podcast where we had, uh, and I'll, I'll send you the link, Jeff, on your email. This is one. It was four of us, and we had 34 characters in the office ranking them from worst to best. So like the first person got to put someone in the very last spot. The next person put someone in the next spot, working our way up. We each had two vetoes. So I had the number, th- uh, no, uh, Paul, my brother-in-law had the number three spot. It was Michael, Dwight, and Kevin were left. And he, he got to pick number three, and I got to pick number two, essentially also picking number one. He chose Dwight as number three, just to take him out of the running so that I couldn't put him as number one. So oh. then I had to choose between Kevin and Michael for number one. And of course I chose Michael to be the number one, but if he had done what he should have done and put Kevin as number three, I would have put Dwight as would have, would have chosen my chosen Michael for number two, 
leaving Dwight for number one. Mm. I personally would go Michael, Dwight, Kevin out of those three. That's how I would rank it. I think everyone would be mad if Kevin was number one. And so yeah. letting having Michael yeah, as number me, one. Michael is number one. But by the, yeah. by the way, we're on the subject of The Office. I'm dating somebody new and she has never seen The Office. So we're, we're just watching through it for the first time. Oh. And I was asking her, like, do you have any predictions? And she's like, oh, the only prediction I have, I hope that Pam doesn't stay with this Roy guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my number one. Not Roy, is Jim. Jim is my number one. Jim ended okay, up being yeah. number four on our ranking, good, which is good. sad. Yeah, it's a good. He's a good character. He is. Yeah. yeah. All right, and um, just so that we to revisit this real quick, um, Kermit for sure would be Cassian because Kermit, as a reluctant leader, he has played that several different times. Yeah, probably. And Miss Piggy would probably be the uppity Empire girl. Okay. She's she's All the right. no nonsense like well she's plenty of nonsense but she has her like I will kick your butt side mm-hmm. and that's what you need for it. I don't I don't have anyone else but that's just a well, beaker's got to be a droid that's all I know. <laughs> well, who would Grover be? Are we, are we crossing over Gonzo, the Gonzo. Gonzo. No, Gonzo. So, Sorry, I was I was okay. I did that the other day too. I referred to Gonzo as Grover. I was like well, that doesn't sound right. I don't know. Gonzo. Uh, it wouldn't make, he wouldn't be Luthen. Uh, Gonzo would be like Mon Mothma's husband or something. Yeah. It's kind of tough. Kind of tough. Or Luthen. Could, or I think Luthen would be Andy Sam Circus. the Eagle. Gonzo would be Andy Circus. That's a great, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. I actually just watched him up. It's Christmas Carol the other day. It's legit. That's like the that's the way you kick off the Christmas season. Because also remember what yeah I, that is the classic. It's the number two after the original for me for sure. But going back to like Gonzo being Andy Circus when they're hanging off the cliff, he could be hanging from his nose. <laughs> um, all the prisoners on their level would be the chickens. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Hire us, Disney. You there own you the go. Muppets and you own Star Wars. You yeah, can make it happen. They, they, they can you make it own happen. both. We can Why do not? this for you. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited though, because I've I've got it on my list and I, I want to watch it before Christmas, but I really want to watch because I haven't seen it since like I saw it the first time on TV. But the uh the what's the Muppets TV special? Letters from Muppets or what was Wait, it? Le- Letters to Santa. Letters to Santa. Is that, that's that the one that's on Dis- there's there's a one called Letters to Santa that's on Disney Plus. I think it's just mediocre at best. Is that the one that like it's a wonderful life that they do that towards the end? No, no, that one is called It's a Very Merry Muppet Christmas movie. It's a dumb title. But yeah. Is that the one is that not on Disney Plus? Because I thought that's what it was. No, it's not on Disney Plus. I'm I have, no longer excited. I have the DVD though. And that's the one that has the the, the cameo of the entire cast of Scrubs. I just threw a bottle of colostrum across the, the very small closet. It didn't have far to go. But that's the extent of my anger. So thanks, Disney, for ruining my life. Where you go, Disney. <laughs> oh, and by the time that this episode airs, speaking of Muppet Christmas Carol, the version of Muppet Christmas Carol that will have the song The Love Is Gone back in it is going to be on Disney+. Plus. Oh, that comes bad. out tomorrow in, in for our time. I think tomorrow. Is, if any of you have not seen that song, you're not missing anything. <laughs> oh, Okay. Bye, well, bye, then, friend, fine, everybody. Jeff. Okay, we're we're even now for me not liking Andor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Now, now there's a reason the why they cut it out of the movie, guys. <laughs> you did once, and then it just cuts. Okay, hey, I'm hey, sorry if I upset you guys. You know what really gets me about that though is like then they do a reprise of it. <laughs> but like, they do when, like, at the very end. Yeah. But then not having the song, the reprise is just like out of nowhere. Like, why is he suddenly singing? I don't. Yeah, but you know what? Okay, I'll say my my final closing thing on Andor, just to bring it back Definitely. one last time. That's what the episode's about, allegedly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I This show is exactly what I was hoping it would be when I thought about Tony Gilroy <laughs> writing it and the nature of where it was set at what time during the galactic conflict. I was like, oh, dude, this is going to be like cloak and dagger uh you know espionage and it did not disappoint personally and i feel like next season they're listening to like 
people's critiques like yours, Brian, and going, well, we have to go, we have to amp it up anyways, because we're condensing three years as opposed to just one season being one full year. Yeah. And they and a lot needs to happen so they can really amp up a little bit of the action in certain places. I still would like the whole earning action sequences, but I was going to say, um, don't listen to Brian's suggestions, Disney. He wasn't even watching it. Yeah. I just think that <laughs> I, I think that the next season is going to move a lot faster for people, but they did it this way to get, to really get into the minds of the characters and understand their motivations over the course of a year. And then next season is going to just be like crazy. So I think so. Well, I'm excited for it. This is exactly what I wanted as well. I'm glad that I last time we talked about a Star Wars franchise, I was talking about my Disney fatigue and how upset I was at just the lack of quality in the writing and lack of new ideas. And so Andor was a beautiful breath of fresh air. And I applaud the writers and I applaud everyone who was involved in it because it was so good. And it's going to come up again because in a couple of weeks, we're going to talk about what are some of the best tv of 2022 and i definitely am going to bring this up one more time because it's on there so well thank you jeff for joining us we're going to jump into trivia here and uh then we'll then we'll say goodbye to you and we'll sing okay. as we're closing it out the love is gone love reprise is gone. <laughs> all right so last, Ryan, yeah last week we talked about mischievous teens and i meant we were talking about recess and the recess movie called recess schools out which is also on disney plus and he said what celebrity cameo played um, the voice of TJ's older sister? And I told Matt earlier, uh, I will explain it all as if I were a teenage witch, basically saying it is Melissa Joan Hart who played um, TJ's older sister in the Recess movie. There you go. Melissa Joan Hart. That's where it's at. All right, Jeff, what do you got? What is the name? What is the technical name of Luthen Rail's ship in the show and or it's two words john cena got it there no, we go. i'm sorry i, I you can't even you gotta bleep it. that yeah. the millennium hawk <laughs> yep you got it there we go all it's right multiple and, choice multiple answer jeff i'm gonna put you on the spot here i've got a fun little trivia that i know that i f- you probably know because you know everything but oh, man. the okay. the planet in Rogue One, that they uh, steal the Death Star plans from is called Scarif. Where did they come up with the name for that planet? It's so funny you mentioned this because <laughs> I was, I was just thinking about this the other day, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, it's like, it was like either scrambled up words or it was. Uh, I'm gonna, it's gonna drive me crazy because I was trying to remember it the other day, but I wasn't like near an internet search i could like look it up really quick so i'm gonna say i actually can't remember i believe that you have it somewhere in your memory but um well i mean you can i don't know brian you can choose if you want to bleep this or not and but i'm gonna give him the answer right now if we want to do two trivias for next week i I will bleep it so you can say say it now i'll have uh, i got the sensor beep ready to go okay it's gonna be a long one because it's (laughs) That's what she half said. story. Oh, thank you. Um, so it was. Guess you know, guys. Uh, our audience only heard a tiny little beep. I'm just gonna cut that out <laughs> instead of having a super long obnoxious <laughs> beep. No, I think I think it should be a 20 second beep. I think that's how we, we reward our faithful listeners with annoyance. Yeah. Well, our audience already knows that I didn't do that, so you're welcome, <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Here, here, we're like good cop, bad cop. Like, let's just put them through the ringer. You're like, no, let's, you know, not make our fan base angry. Well, our arrangement is I do the editing. So basically, I can just do whatever I want. I can do whatever he wants. That's I can just mute Matt and you can listen to me and Jeff the whole time. True. Yep. You and could do be that. very confused when I'm responding to Matt's comments. It's like, <laughs> what? Brian didn't even say anything. Exactly. What is Jeff talking about <laughs> the entire episode? <laughs> He's just hearing it from the Lord in the middle of it. That's right. God's speaking to him. <laughs> yep. All there right. You go casting yourself as the Lord again. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, what are yeah. you talking about? Uh, deep cut. Anyway, so thank you again to Jeff. If you want more of Jeff's amazing voice, you can catch him on YouTube on Elijah Fire. You can't see it, but he's got an Elijah Fire mic right in front of him um, that you, you'll probably be able to see if you look on our like advertising for this mm-hmm. episode. And then my live sign from it. is on on that show. It's off it today. Is. Yeah. Same Rivendell yeah. picture though. Yeah, Jeff's got go. a, a good camera, a nice like actual professional setup. Uh, I got a Christmas tree behind me. Matt's at a closet. <laughs> <laughs> you, every time you say it, it's like with such judgment in your voice. Matt's in a closet again. Like, you know, I got four kids running around and their voices carry. Yeah. So this yeah. is purposeful. Anyway. No. <laughs> sounds good well thank you guys for listening to us glad to be back glad you stuck with us um we're getting close to christmas so you know spread some christmas love show yeah. people uh how much you care about them show them how much god cares about them which is a lot and uh just enjoy this christmas season christmas is awesome that's right and, uh, it's that's a good so time true. to be alive so until next time i'm matt i'm brian and i'm jeff and we're reminding you to stay tuned and keep watching Thank you.